Hi everybody, welcome to a new episode of Bass Habits. Today we're gonna to talk about metal, but not just a random metal band. Today we're gonna to talk about the metal gods themselves, Judas Priest and their bass player, Ian Hill. I'll be honest, at the beginning I didn't want to make a video about Ian Hill. In fact, I wanted to make a video explaining why I couldn't make a video about Ian Hill. In order to review a bass player, I need something to talk about. It can be a special technique, like Steve Harris' right hand gallop, or D.D. Ramon's super fast down picking, or an unusual tone like Lemmy or Philly of Korn, or it can be distinct melodic choices like John Paul Jones of Led Zeppelin. The best is when you have all these things together, like Duff McKagan or Geezer Butler. To put it simple, I need 5 or 6 interesting things to say about the player. But what about Ian Hill? Judas Priest are known for Rob Halford's voice and for the epic twin guitar work of Glenn Tipton and K.K. Dowin, now Richie Faulkner. Someone might even go as far as citing Scott Travis and his epic intro on Painkiller. <laughs> But what about bass? Hill is not a bad player, how could he? He's the longest standing member in one of the greatest metal bands of all time. So how come he gets no attention at all? Well, first of all, you have to consider that he plays together not with one, not with two, but with three divas. Normally, rock bands have one rhythm and one lead player, like ACDC, but not Judas Priest. Every song has three or four very articulated guitar riffs, with long instrumental parts and extended solos. And when guitar heroes K.K. Downing and Glenn Tipton are not shredding a million notes per second, they're busy playing riff after riff. And we're not talking about ACDC open chord style riffs, with a lot of space that can be taken by the bass, but we're talking about this. <laughs> There's hardly room for anything else, so the rhythm section has to hold it down. You might argue that Iron Maiden has not two but three guitar heroes and still manages to have an interesting rhythm section. But in my opinion, when it comes to riffing, there's no contest. Judas Priest are far superior. Ian Hill's policy is pretty much staying out of the way. Also, by the songwriting process, the bass player himself stated they did a tremendous job, and why would I try to insinuate myself into a something that works very well? So there's really not much to say about Ian Hill, but you know what? He's the bass player of Judas Priest, and he deserves his own video. During Judas Priest's now almost 50 years long career, Ian Hill has been mainly doing only three things. Playing the root note, doubling the guitar riff, and playing power chord arpeggios. That's it. Number 1. The root note. Quoting Ian Hill, if you got a good, solid, driving rock or metal number and start playing around and doing licks, riffs and things like that, it takes that solidness away. It becomes lighter. Ian Hill is off to the side, doing his job, letting everybody else have the spotlight. But that doesn't make his role less important. Sometimes it's a slightly different pattern from the usual 8 notes, like in Bloodstone. Number 2. Doubling the guitar part. When he is not keeping a solid root note, Ian is doubling the guitar riff. That's it, nothing else. These two songwriting choices, combined with the steady drumming, make the backbone of 90% of Judas Priest's music. As solid as it gets. Number 3. The Power Chords Arpeggios Here, things get a little more interesting. On the early Judas Priest records, the bass got a little more action. Not only is more audible in the mix, but in a few occasions, it took up some space, giving a very welcome break from the walls of guitar. When so, Hill seems to be adopting always the same solution, root, fifth and eighth power chord arpeggios. 
But the interesting part is how it variates the order of the notes, creating a nice and very progressive effect. The chorus of Tyrant is the best example. Also pretty cool is the bass intro of The Rage, which by the way is the only bass intro Judas Priest ever had, unless you want to count also Love Bites, but that uses a synth bass. Another nice little touch is the way he follows the vocals on Winter. For the early years of Judas Priest's work, Hill played a 1970s Fender jazz bass, later switching to Hammer in the mid-80s. He then switched to Spectre basses which he's using still today. Spectre are currently producing an Ian Hill signature bass guitar based on Hill's late 80s NS2, fitted with an extra narrow neck. During the recording sessions of Jugulator and Demolition, Hill used the 5-string Spectre bass to access the lower registers needed to match the down-tuned guitars. As said, he and Hills got to work with an acrobatic singer and not one but two guitar players who are throwing in riffs and licks and solos all the time, so someone has to step back in order to let all this happen and Ian doesn't really mind being out of the spotlight. After all, he's the longest standing member of the band, and without Ian Hill, Priest wouldn't have recruited the metal god himself, Rob Halford. It was Hill who brought him on in 1972. So what's the reason for Judas Priest's popularity and staying power? Well, one of the main features is that, like in the case of ACDC and Iron Maiden, they never changed their style. Judas Priest's music is based on the extraordinary voice of Rob Halford and the outstanding twin guitars work. In order to make that emerge, the rhythm section has to hold back. As the old saying goes, less is more. You need to do what's required to make the song sound the way it should, and not just to self-indulge. And Ian Hill is a master at that. And judging by the amount of requests I got for this video, despite his simple style, he's a very appreciated bass player. Thank you very much for watching, please don't forget to subscribe, follow me on Instagram and leave us a like.